A CPU fan literally sounds like a vacuum cleaner of the 90s. <laughs> All right, peeps, I'm just recording on a whim here. I'm still at work. I'm just about ready to go back in, but I just had to record the haul of old machines that I got today. So I hope you'll forgive all of the stupid noises and stuff, but I just got to show these things to you real quick. I'm going to hopefully try to get some footage of me turning these things on while I'm here because it'll make it a lot easier, but we'll find out. Hopefully within the magic of video editing, I'll have to wait. But here we have probably one of the most valuable systems here. This is a digital PC 5000 of some kind. It's got a Pentium 2 case badge on it. It's got some kind of additional drive enclosure. It's unfortunately locked, so I can't open it, but I'm not sure. I think that actually contains a hard drive. I'm not joking, like I think that actually does have a hard drive in there, but I'm not sure. I can't see it. Uh, CD-ROM drive and a floppy drive though. It does have its audio jacks, and I really don't know what is in any of these to be honest with you but I'll slowly see if I can like turn this one around well that's kind of cool we'll get to this one here in a moment but um there's this digital it does have a couple of USB ports it does have onboard Ethernet which is pretty dope it's got a VGA card down there in addition to whatever's on board so probably some PCI solution digital PC 5510 6233 so if that's anything to go off of, this is a 233 megahertz Pentium 2, which is excellent. So that'll go great with my other digital PC 3000, which is actually a Pentium 166 MMX. But this one actually has its top cover, which makes it all the more interesting. That's why I got it. So that's not all, of course. I've got three other things here. Not the least of which is, well, the next subject in line, these, uh, or this Packard Bell Legend, 35 CD Supreme and I've tried to do some research before I started recording and I for the life of me cannot find any information on this machine at least I haven't looked into it yet funny enough actually before I continue the story behind this haul here was that I was walking out of Best Buy I was doing a return on something and as I was walking out this lady was piling old computers onto this cart and so I had to do a double take because I saw this digital that was sitting in there and then this Gateway 2000 came later which that's just a, a jar side panel. Don't worry, this front panel's not broken, I hope. <laughs> and, uh, and so I stopped in front of it. I was like, huh, where'd you get these from or whatever? And then we started talking. So these are old office computers that were sitting in storage for who knows how many years. They're, all the hard drives are unfortunately scrapped, so I didn't get those, which is totally fine. I respect data security, so I was perfectly fine with dealing with that. But they were going to go recycle at the Best Buy. I was like, ah, oh, this was just so cool. And she just straight up let me have whatever I wanted. So I doubt that she's watching this, but props to you, lady. I respect you. That was freaking awesome. Like, I cannot believe that I was able to walk away with these things and I saved them for a cycle. Like, that's freaking awesome. So props to the lady. Again, that's amazing. But anyways, back to this Packard Bell. So I, for the life of me, like, I cannot find any information online about this thing. I'm going to place my bet of zero dollars that it's a 486 DX2. That's what I think it is. I'm gonna have to find that out, but I believe that's what is in there is gonna be a 486. It's a very low model number, and the Supreme is interesting because I think that means, and this was I was told this by somebody on my Discord, you'll probably know who you are, that Supreme just means it was like sold at Sears or something. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean. I'm not a Packard Bell expert by any stretch. So somebody probably have to clarify it down below in the comments, but either way, like I'm, I'm really ecstatic to just own these and to hopefully turn them on and see if they actually post and do anything, which will be awesome. Then I have this here, is this Compact Presario 5190. This is actually an AMD K62 as based on the spec sticker. And it actually has a factory DVD ROM drive, which is excellent. It's got a Zip 100 drive as well, that's factory. It's got a little door here, which I had to fix that, but it actually still works, which it wasn't working before. I had to bend one of the tabs back, but it actually clicks into place. And I haven't even looked at the back. Oh gosh, it's got one of those like compact digital flat panel connectors on it. Oh my gosh. Remember when those were a thing? <laughs> but um, it actually has onboard ethernet too, really? Oh, that's cool. I didn't even see that. Um, yeah, it's got VGA parallel ethernet. 
Um, no USB on the back. They're all on the front. Which, honestly, I think that's probably a smarter place to put them anyway, but either way, it doesn't really matter too much. And the serial port, for some reason, is off the motherboard. But still, that's pretty cool. And then last but not least is this Gateway 2000 little desktop machine. It's unfortunately missing the front bezel for the CD-ROM drive, but that's not a big deal. This is actually a probably a Socket 7 Pentium of some kind. It's not an MMX, so this is definitely a... Uh, 1995 to 1997-ish computer. Oh, well, there we go. There's my answer, P5133. I didn't even see that. <laughs> wow, I'm blind. So yeah, that answers that. 133 megahertz Pentium, if it works. That's, I'm assuming that's what's still in there. So all in all, I'm super ecstatic to have all these and for free. And I'm also gonna fix the side panel, don't you worry. So I cannot wait. I'm gonna try to see if I can bring these in and give them a spice a life with some 120 volt electricity and see if they still function granted I, we won't be able to boot into anything but that's okay i just want to see if they even post that's the most important part particularly that digital pc and the packard bell like everything else of course i want to see if they work but i'm most ecstatic about that digital because those things are really hard to come by these days so in any case so thanks to the magic of video editing you probably won't have to wait that long but I might, so rip. Anyways, see you guys here in a moment. All right, figured the first test subject is going to be this Packard Bell. I don't have too much time, but I'm going to go ahead and just try this one out first because I'm super curious and anxious. I want to see if it does something. Ooh, that CD drive does not sound good. <laughs> <gasps> it works! Yes! 360x266! I freaking called that one. Oh my gosh, wow. Wow. Nice! It actually works! PB450M motherboard. Bruh, that's awesome. I wonder how much memory that equates to. I'll put it in a subtitle up above. Then we'll know. But dope! Oh, that's awesome. Oh, that's so exciting. I'll have to see what's going on with that C drive, but I'll worry about it later. Okay, next up is going to be this digital PC, and uh, I don't know if it's going to auto-power on or what. Okay, luckily it didn't, so here goes everything or nothing. It's got a fan. It did spin down, at least a little bit. Ooh, she posts! Yes, I was right, Pentium 2, 233. Dang, I called that one. How much RAM does it got? Ooh, somebody upgraded this one. It's got more than 128 megs of RAM in it. 256 megs of RAM. All right. It's a pretty healthy amount for this machine. Seems like everything else is detected. BIOS date of February 23rd, 1998. That's awfully late for a 233 megahertz Pentium 2, but maybe if this thing was a little bit cheaper, then that actually would make sense. Of course, there's no hard drive to boot up off of, but that's fine. Sweet! So this one is actually working too. Pretty dope. Next system, I guess. Two for two. All right, are we three for three? I hope so. Let's find out. Oh, I didn't press it hard enough. Hang on. Uh-oh. Opens up with this power button. Is that or the power supply or something? Something's not making a good connection. Maybe that's why this one got scrapped. Luckily this doesn't have any screws on it, so what's going on? Can't quite tell. Hmm. I would wager to bet this one actually does boot, but, um, oh, hang on. Hang on. There's a CD-ROM drive bezel. Yeah, I could probably Snap that back into place. Well, look at that! There, I already feel much better about this thing posting. I'll just have to check it out later when I can actually, like, you know, access the power button, maybe. Oh, you know what? I actually think, yeah, that's probably why this doesn't come off right away is because of that CD-ROM drive bezel actually being on there. Oh, okay. Or maybe not. 
Oh, well, that's why. It's because the power button fell into the case. So that's why I can't turn it on. Okay, well, that should be fixable, I would suppose. Um, hmm. I bet you I try to reach my hand in there and I could try to persuade it back in. And I guess I could probably do that later. But I want to get this working now because I'm so anxious and curious. I want to see if it actually does something. But mm, maybe I could persuade it. Well, whatever I did, it agitated it away. I saw the power button light up. Well, <gasps> yes, it posts. It posts. It's got 64 megs of RAM. Yes. That was so worth it. Okay. That was worth it. This is a CD-ROM drive at least to work. Yes, it does. Okay. Worth it. I'm going to have to fix that power button. But that was so worth it. Glad to know this thing works. Frick yeah. All right. Last up, we have the Compact Presario 5190, which actually has a physical power switch on the back. And I did fix the side panel, so it's not bulging out anymore. So, at least there's that. I love these Best Buy stickers. I think that's like December 20th, 2003. Well, we got power on. It automatically did it for me, so it's probably the CMOS battery's dead. Standard diskette drive not found. It's probably because of the CMOS battery being dead. Interestingly, the sun has not came on, which normally in these compacts, the... Sun is the power light, but oftentimes I don't think that shows up until the system actually starts booting its operating system. And then only the moon comes on when it's on uh, the Windows 98 on now mode, which is basically sleep. I think that's how these old compacts worked. Of course, there's no fixed disk or diskette drives. That's perfectly fine. Yeah, the CMOS battery's got to be dead. It's got to be dead. <laughs> Uh, does it not show the system memory on the compact logo? Dang, I wish I had a PS2 keyboard at hand that I could actually plug into this thing. I don't think we've got any here, and I didn't get any with these computers, obviously, so... I'm going to assume that they probably upgraded it at some point with the memory. Um, what did this thing have in it when it was new? Um, hmm. Doesn't mention really anything about the memory. I would bet at least 64 megs of RAM, maybe 128 if this thing was fortunate enough to have access to it. Yeah, it's not going to tell me anything. So, likely, either it's the same amount of memory or it was upgraded from 64 to 128 or something like that would be my guess. Or maybe it's stock. I have no idea. Uh, does the DVD drive work? It might not like opening on the side. Yeah, I don't think it likes opening or it's not plugged in or something like that. Wouldn't you want to bet that maybe this thing had like a like a quantum Bigfoot in it or something? Wouldn't that be funny? Yeah, it doesn't. No, let's see if I can. Yeah, there we go. Oh, is it like one of those? Ah, yeah, see? So the moonlight actually works. But you hit the power button and like... It like powers the computer back on or something to the last state. Is that what it does? Yeah, that's exactly what it does. That fan sounds like a vacuum cleaner. That was hilarious. Okay, well, the power button does work. Sweet. Well, that is a win-win for everything. I am thrilled. I am so glad. All right, peeps, it is, well, technically a day later, but it's also going into the second day at this point. So the footage is probably for the next little bit going to be scrambled so i apologize but you know it's late at night i'm probably going to go to bed so i thought while i have the motivation i'm going to record this next portion of the video so here's my box that is full of hard drives so i'm going to set aside some drives for these machines of what capacities i honestly don't know i do know for a fact that this particular one here this seagate metalist I'm going to try to put this in the Packard Bell, and I hope that it works with this drive because it does have a manufacture date of sometime in late 1994, but I have no idea if it actually works with drives larger than 528 megabytes. 
I hope that it does. I mean, if it doesn't, that's fine. I mean, I could probably make do with some kind of disc overlay software. And I could probably get the full capacity of the disc. And it's not a real big deal. Maybe slightly annoying. I think I might be able to make use of this. This is a 2.5 gig Western Digital Caviar. So I could probably go on this Gateway 2000. Like from about the same time about 1997 or so and then i figure um let's see there's a six gig max store there i'm gonna assume that other one's very similar in capacity probably i would assume it is they're very similar maybe this is slightly bigger i think this is like an 8.4 gig hard drive or something there's a 10 gig hard drive so probably what i could do at least maybe i could throw the 8.4 gig into this digital, which I'm already kind of slandering with a bunch of stuff. But the digital Pentium 2 system could probably get the 8.4 gig. And then I think I could probably stick this 10 gig into that compact. Or at least to start off with, I could probably put the 10 gig into this compact. Does it say what it actually had it on the sticker? I don't think it did. I don't see anything that mentions it. So probably just gonna stick this in here and call it a day i'll install them tomorrow because i'm honestly kind of tired but i wanted to record this segment so i at least have something and then i'll do all the installation sensations tomorrow i don't think i'm going to speed run them but when i get to each machine i'll kind of loosely throw the drive into the machine make sure it can work with it and then if it is compatible and is seen by the each machine's uh, bios then i could probably get to installing windows after that. I think what I'm gonna also do is, as far as OS's go, uh, the Packard Bell and the Gateway 2000, I think they're both gonna get Windows 95 because that's the easiest thing to install. Uh, I, I figure anyway, it's probably gonna be the easiest thing to install. So the Packard Bell, as I later discovered, because I'm a dumb, um, it actually has 20 megabytes of RAM, which for a 486 is actually pretty good. So I see no reason why it can't run 95, at least acceptably, with a 486DX266. That should be totally fine. The only thing I have some concerns with is that CD-ROM drive because it made some awful grinding sounds. I need to find a floppy drive, but that's not that big of a deal. I think I've got a few of those. So that shouldn't be a huge concern. Of course, with all of these things, it's going to be drivers, particularly that digital PC. I guess I'll cross that bridge when I get there. I think this might either get 98 or ME. I'm not sure. I might do ME first so I can see if all the hardware works because I think ME is going to probably have about the best hardware support for these machines. At least that's what I think. And I may consider just doing 98 only on this Presario. I don't think I'm going to throw ME, but I don't know. Maybe I'll think about it because, again, drivers are a huge considering factor. And ME might have all the drivers for that thing, as well as the digital PC. So I might just have to go down that route, but we'll figure that out tomorrow. Either way, I'm going to go catch some Zs, and I will pick up the camera tomorrow. Of course, beforehand, I am going to preface, I will have my friend Chris in the video, because he's going to come by, and he's going to be doing some stuff with me. So he may be in the background, so expect some BS to go down, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, guys, I want to catch you guys later. So thanks to the magic of video editing. Tomorrow will be right now. All right. So there's the boy himself. Um, yeah, we ended up having some yard sales pop up and went to one of them. And well, I got another machine to add to the stack because go figure. But I mean, hey, it was nothing worth complaining about. So I have no idea what's inside. I have my guesstimations because I think it's probably some kind of a uh, I would guess an Athlon XP. And you can probably tell just based on that motherboard. I've had one like this, it was bright red like that, and it was socket A, so my guess is it's, well, Athlon XP. Um, doesn't have any screws on the side panel, so I think I might be able to try to take this off. I don't know, it's kind of tight on there, but I do like the case. It doesn't have the front panel anymore, but it does remind me of another one that I have had in the past. I think it's out in, my, uh, out in the shed or whatever, but um, I had a cool front panel on it or something it's got dual optical drives they're both ide so that's always good it has a floppy drive and a card reader a couple usb ports on the front 
It doesn't have a hard drive. The guy took it out. That makes perfect sense though. It does have a couple of pass-through cables, probably for a headset. It does have a wireless card and some kind of a video card. I have no idea what it is. So I guess we'll find out what it is here probably in a little bit. It's got a date code of the 31st week of 2003. So that's actually probably error appropriate, probably when this machine was made or roughly around when this machine was made. It was around 2003, maybe early 2004, but I highly doubt it with Athlon XP being like that. Um, I think you probably would have went penny and four at that time because, uh, yeah, it would have just made a lot more sense. So in addition to that, I'll have to get a hard drive for that. So luckily I did bring out my box of hard drives. So maybe, um, what do I got here? That's a SATA drive that won't work. That's 250 gig. That's too big, I think. That's a little too old. I'm not sure what kind of drives I've got. 120 gig. And I don't really want to use that. 160 gig. I also don't want to use that one. So to be honest with you, I'll have to see if I've got an extra drive. I swear I've got like a, well, besides that 80 gig, I think I've got a couple other ones over there. So maybe I've got a drive for it. But either way, I'm going to try these hard drives I pulled out last night and put them into these machines and see if they recognize them. And we'll figure everything out from there. So, yeah. I apologize for the background noise. It must be lawn day today because everybody is either using their mower, weed eater, or whatever kind of lawn equipment. So apologize in advance for that. But here is the system. It's got a couple of rear exhaust fans by the look of it. Um, there's that heat sink there. And I would obviously wager to bet that that is going to be Athlon XP. Just based on everything I can tell here. It does have a PCI wireless card, so that's always worth something. Definitely worth the three bucks. It's got an intake fan down there. Definitely a lot of mess of cables though. Although cable management back in 2003 would have not been a consideration, particularly with the things that are routed to the back if you wanted front panel audio. As far as the RAM goes, it looks like we've got two sticks of 512 meg DDR looks like. So one gig of RAM, that's actually not too bad. And uh, power supply is a 420 watt from Raid Max. I'm going to be kind of curious. What's this video card? It's on this little label there. GeForce 4 MX 440, 128 meg. Not bad. It's an interesting purple PCB. I've never seen that before. I wonder what the make of this uh, video card is. Oh, besides the Molex power connectors. I can't quite see what they are. I have no idea what that brand name is there, but that might just be the thing on the fan. And there's that. Well, that, let's zoom in here. There's that AirLink wireless card. And BIOS, whoops, BIOS is down there. So, very interesting. I hope it works. It'll be interesting to see what kind of a processor this thing has in it, at least as far as the clock speed goes. And that's pretty much it. Be a Windows XP box, if nothing else. Maybe a 2000 box, because Athlon XP. Yeah, this is something we're gonna be doing off camera. We're not actually gonna record this part of the video, because it it doesn't need to be recorded, but check out that. It's a gorgeous, tough gaming card. I actually love the look of these. Yeah, I mean, pretty pretty understated. Yeah, but, uh, I don't need the flashy RGB. I just want a good functional flashy. card. Exactly. And the tough gamings are always great cards. At least in recent years, they've always been pretty good cards. So, so that'll definitely be something for putting inside of this thing to check out. But anyways, we're about to get screwed. So oh, well, my autofocus isn't working, so whatever. We're about to get screwed, putting hard drives into the, uh, into, well, well, okay, you don't even know what it is. <laughs> don't worry about it. So what system do you want to work on first out of the four, or in this case, five? In this case, no, I'm kidding. Uh, the Packer Bell, obviously. I mean, we could. I mean, I got the hard drive out for it it's sitting over there. I mean, the compact's already on the desk, so we might as well work on the compact. That is true, and it's probably, the, it's going to be the biggest pain in the ass, because the thing about this is it's so small and the power supply is in the way. So maybe it might just be a good idea to get that out of the way because all the other ones are going to be so much less pain to deal with, particularly that one because it's a standard case, but, you know, whatever. Well, maybe the Gateway 2000 might come next because, like, I know that thing's kind of got a weird setup. So, I mean, I don't know. Maybe we'll work on this. Yes, forgive the mess. I got things, like, 50 million things going everywhere. So sorry about that. Mmm. Mmm. Uh, 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 mmm. Mmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, a lot more sounds. Anyways, so <laughs> this 
This thing has more memory than I thought. It actually has a 128 meg from the factory, which is not too unsurprising. But then right in here, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it on camera easily. Might be, not, probably not, but that's a 256 meg stick. So this thing has 384 megs of RAM, well, assuming that this, uh, well, actually reports it as 384. That's a crazy amount of memory for a K62. Not that it can't use it, it's just it's a crazy amount for a K62. Anyways, back to getting this thing back together. I had to take the power supply out because I replaced the CMOS battery because it was dead. So I wanted to get that out of the way. Okay, this is probably how the hard drive was supposed to go in a machine like this. I believe this had a Quantum Bigfoot that sat on the top here. And so what that probably means is, well, five and a quarter inch hard drive had the special mounting holes. So it's only held in with one screw. And I do not believe that they would have put a hard drive in that section of the case. It would not have fit. So I think that's the most logical spot where Compaq would have put a hard drive in this thing. And of course it's not there. So this will have to do this lovely 10 gig hard drive that I pulled out last night for this thing. So we'll roll with that. I figure next, as far as getting hard drives mounted into machines go, because this one's probably gonna be the next complicated, is the Gateway 2000. So probably just go ahead and get into this one. And I also need to do another thing, which is I need to fix the power button since it's dangling in the case. So this front panel does have to come off. Uh, and then I can also retrieve the uh, CD-ROM bezel wherever it went. And hopefully we get this thing fixed once and for all. And probably while I'm in here, I might replace that CR2032 just like I did in the compact as well. Just makes sense. I've got the batteries, so since they're cheap enough, who cares? Might as well just get her done, right? So figure out how a hard drive goes in this thing. And then I guess I shall come back later because I'm not gonna record the whole thing because it's probably gonna fill a lot of swear words. So while I was in here as part of the video earlier, you might remember that the power button switch thing was, well, not in place, so I fixed that. It was actually held in with a screw, so I got that in there, made sure that it was lined up, so that should fix that problem. And now I've got hard drive in there, which I'm only using two screws because I don't know if that's actually going to work. So that can line up back in there, and then there's two screws, and then uh, this piece came out for an extra five and a quarter inch bay that slides back in. And then I gotta find the CD-ROM bezel wherever it went before I actually screw everything back in because I actually wanna put that back on the drive, make this thing look pretty, or at least as pretty as it can, and go from there. All right, and the Gateway 2000 is back together. I hope that I've got this jumper correctly. I did check it before I shoved it into the caddy here. I'm gonna get everything reassembled. I found the CD-ROM bezel, so now that's reconnected. So power button actually feels like it's hitting something now, so. I think we're all good, I hope. I hope that power button didn't fall back in the case because it's gonna be slightly annoying if it did, but I guess if it did, it did, so I'll just have to figure out a way to remount that, I guess, in the future if it did. Whatever. Um, so yeah, this thing's pretty much ready to put the side, or the top back on in this case. And then I'm just gonna take care of the rest of the drives off camera to save some time, and then hopefully I get those things tested here after a little bit, thanks to the magic of this guy. Hey, he actually said the catchphrase properly. Dab. Actually, that's a thumbs up, not a dab. Whatever. G close enough. <laughs> All right, for the Packer Bell, we have drives. Whether or not they actually work, I'm more skeptical about the floppy drive than the hard drive. However, I have drives. Well, hopefully they work. So, gotta get this crammed back in here. Okay, up first is the Packer Hell, as some people like to jokingly call these things. So, let's see if I get lucky and have the hard drive work first try. I doubt it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know CMOS battery's dead. Wow, really, this, the settings are invalid. Well, it's got a good time and date. Zero, oops. <laughs> zero, zero, question mark, question mark, zero, one. That's my favorite time and date. Yeah, I remember that date. Sees a C drive of zero megabytes, so... I probably have the cable backwards, like I figured I did. I hit auto type, so see if it actually does anything. Yep, nope, it didn't do anything. I didn't think it would, so I'm going to need to pop back open the case and figure that out. But either way, it does appear to have a large disk access mode, so this BIOS is actually new enough where I think we might be lucky enough to get the full 630 megabytes or so out of that drive, so that'll be cool. 
But yeah, it looks like I gotta go flip around some IDE connections because they're backwards. Yay. All right, I flipped around the IDE cable for the hard drive and it was actually wondering why it was a little quiet, but now I turn it on. That's a hard drive sound. Let's see if it shows up here in the BIOS. I should probably go into the setup actually. I mean, at the very least, it does appear to show up. It spins up now. It's definitely a sign I had the cable backwards. This is one of those machines where it was so early that it didn't have the little dead pin in the connector. Still not detecting it though, so that's kind of annoying. I have no idea what kind of, well, drive it is, to be fair with you. Oh, right. So, I may have to try to get those things myself, which is annoying because I already put all the things back in there, but whatever, right? So. Oh, no, actually there it is right there. Okay, it was on the wrong IDE port. So it actually does show up. For some reason it's drive D, but it does show up as the full capacity, so it does actually properly detect it, so that's cool. So I'm gonna set that to auto, set that to on, set that to on, which I don't know if that's actually gonna make it work or not work, but whatever. So the optical drive looks to be, I don't know, well, there's nothing on that today. I'm supposed to just gonna bounce off and then do absolutely nothing, so I get to wait for it, yay. Anyway, so I might have to flip around those IDE cables before we get started. So in any case, yeah, that's that. Okay, actually, before I do that, I just noticed this. Um, we can have uh, 40 hours in a 24-hour day, right? Yes, that sounds about right. Yeah, 40 hours, that's normal, right? It's along with the, the question mark, question mark, zero, one year. Because that's how years work, right? Yeah. Actually, I decided just for the sake of testing, I'm going to go ahead and just run this thing as is. No sense in, like, you know, actually doing anything. So let's see if it actually saves the settings and boots. Or if it's so dead that I exit setup and it doesn't let me actually boot up. So let's find out. One, two, three. Oh, it actually did save my settings, I believe. Yep, operating system not found. I figured as such because there's nothing on that hard drive. So, cool. The only thing at this point that I'm not sure, actually, no, wait, nope, nope, it didn't. It didn't save the settings at all. <laughs> That's yeah, great. The 1st of, or the 6th of June, 1650. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I, I was looking at the settings here. Actually, they're user-defined, so maybe, but it didn't save my floppy drive, so something tells me either that CMOS battery is, like, so dead that it can't actually, like, save the settings or what the deal is. So that might well be the case with this system just because of the fact of the motherboard just needs a working CMOS battery. But on these Packard Bells, it's soldered, so that's great. So I'm going to have to figure that out. So either way, this thing seems to work. It does detect the hard drive that it's got in there, but it does not look like I can get it working, at least today. So we're gonna move on to the next one. Okay, up next on the docket is the Gateway 2000. Let's see if my power button works. Hey, it does. So that fix was successful. Does we have Vidya? We do have Vidya. Wait, 128 megs of RAM. That didn't show up last time. Huh, <laughs> this actually has more memory than I thought it did. Well, that's cool. Let's go into setup. Oh, it sees it. It sees the hard drive. Cool. All right. That's all I care to know is if it saw the hard drive, and it does. So it looks like it's just taking a extra long time to detect everything because it's IDE, and, well, that's usually how it goes. Well, at least it makes me feel better because I actually put the jumper in the right way because, well, I wasn't sure. So, all right. Well, I guess I'm going to be waiting a while while this thing does its job of detecting everything. Or not, because as soon as I mention it, it's going to go into the BIOS because it just found the floppy drive. <laughs> All right, June 18th, 2022, uh, not the right time, but it is very much on the right day. So whatever battery was actually in there seemingly kept the time and date somewhat correct. Huh. About two hours off. Yeah, that's actually not too bad. 
So I guess my CMOS battery replacement was actually worth doing. So cool. Floppy options. That is correct. Uh, hard drive is detected. The optical drive isn't, although that's a pretty easy fix. I can check that out later. Um, <laughs> anything in here? I don't think I need to touch anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and... Uh, I already detected everything, so I'm just going to hit exit saving changes and just let it reboot because I might as well write something to the CMOS so it's valid. And uh, I don't know what's on this hard drive. It doesn't matter, so whatever's on there is going to get booted up. So, yeah, it is what it is. Okay, compact time. Let's see if this one actually works. Power switch. And then... Oh, it's already on. You can hear the vacuum cleaner CPU fan. Oh, man. It says compact on the screen. I'll probably will say compact on the screen. That CPU fan literally sounds like a vacuum cleaner of the 90s. <laughs> so it might be here a while because I think the auto of this monitor has something off the screen or something, so you can't see the text cursor. Following configuration options for automatically updated disk drives. Ooh, woo. As opposed to disk drives. Oh, and it rebooted. <laughs> I think it does a reboot and then it detects the other drives or something like that. Oh, there's the cursor. Yes, there's speakers, computer, you can detect them, cool. English, all right. We have a setup and it's dated November 11th, 1998. So let's see, time to go through all these things. Yeah, all right. All right, let me look this thing over. Oh no, what is on this hard drive? Well, it was doing an NTFS driver load or something. Well, we, got a mouse cursor. we have a mouse cursor. I did apply some updates to this because it has the the weird font on the header there. Well, that's a surprise. Um, I have no idea what this actually came out of. And it booted Windows 98, so I guess I will find out here after a little while. Plug and play BIOS, fill safe. <gasps> really? Well, now we get to wait for Windows 98 to do its thing, because, well, it's Windows 98. Well, um... That lasted a long... This is user-friendly Windows 98. <laughs> <laughs> Just shut down. Nice. <laughs> or did it? Hang on, we guys should go. Hit the power button here. I think it did shut down, truthfully. Probably just gave up. It did. <laughs> it just shut down. <laughs> I should probably go into the BIOS and, uh, you know, turn off the memory test that takes like five years. <sighs> okay, take two after it, like, just powered off. <laughs> just very weird, but whatever. I guess we will go with it. And there it goes. Windows. I'll have to check the... ID configuration, see if it's even picking up an optical drive. I do genuinely wonder where the heck this hard drive came out of, because I honestly don't know. <laughs> now, now we're back to driver hell. Well, old Bessie blue screened again, so, uh... It... Wait. Oh, that's interesting. I saw it show the shutdown screen. Yep, there it went. <laughs> It actually showed the shut shutdown down. screen. <laughs> and then guess what? It shut down. <laughs> uh, maybe I misread the blue screen. Maybe that was what it's intended to do. All right, last but not least, is something that's analog. No, I'm just kidding. It's digital. Let's see if this one actually does anything worthwhile. I plugged in that, like, external enclosure thing because I didn't know if it actually would work. So... I guess we'll see if that was worth doing. I'm going to probably just skip this memory test. Well, let's see what it does. All right, we have a CD-ROM drive. What else do we got? Let's see if it actually detects a hard drive. Hopefully it does. <laughs> Yawning as well, apparently. All right, sweet. We do have a 8.4 gigabyte hard drive. Dope. So... Uh, I think with that, I think we could probably go ahead. I'm going to check these settings here. I think we'll go ahead and just tell it to boot. Do, 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 do. Skip memory test. 
And away we go, hopefully. Floppy drives doing its workout. Valid system disc. Oh, there might actually not be anything on this one uh, as far as the hard drive goes. I don't think it's actually got an OS. And that's wanting a floppy to boot from, so that makes dollars. Well, there's that. <laughs> At least it does see the hard drive, so this one's just probably going to need an operating system loaded back on it. So that's not too bad. I can figure that out later. So overall, I would say that was a success, getting all four of these machines saved from cycle and then actually putting hard drives back in them. They are definitely going to need some work, especially the Packard Bell. It needs a new CMOS battery, it looks like, to even save the settings because it won't even save them, which I think that affects a few different models. I'm not entirely sure which ones, but it apparently affects mine. The Gateway 2000 seems to work. Uh, it's a little slow at posting, but it does seem to detect its drive. And the Compaq, I really don't know what's up with the Windows install that's on its drive, but I'll figure that out later and why it keeps shutting off. And the digital seems to work, so that's awesome too. Just needs a reload of Windows as well. So I will save that for another video, because this one's gone on long enough, obviously. So with that, I'm going to... Oh, but wait, we have the last one here, which is this, well, black custom built. So I don't even know if this thing is going to work, truthfully. It's worth a shot, though, so I've got it plugged in. I guess we'll see if anything happens with it. I hear life. Yep, oh, or not. <laughs> or is that just the... Uh... No, no. It ain't happy. I didn't think it would be. That's usually never how it goes. So one beep, probably memory. Let's give it a quick reseat here. Any better luck? Nope, we're still having a boot problem looks like well darn i guess we'll have to figure that out another day i don't know what's making it go single beep i'll have to figure out what biosis has i'll deal with it another day so for real disease this time uh we'll have to figure this out another day but uh, anyway I'm getting beside the point here so yeah besides that that is actually going to be it for this video so if you like what you saw well then you know, press if you didn't like it so much well then the other button works get subscribed down below so you don't miss when i upload new content and, well, there's definitely going to be some future videos, as long as I have the time to do them. I'll see about that. I digress. Anyways, so with that having been said, thank you all for coming to watch, and I'll catch you later.